Hey everyone, so for today's video, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I just can't stop smiling, you guys. We are doing the best of beauty for 2021. The collective best of beauty video is my favorite video to do every single year. I just get to sit here and chat with you guys about all of these holy grail products, which is very, very fun for me. I really hope you guys are as excited as I am. So what I'm going to do is talk about my most used products out of every category, but there are still a bunch of holy grail items from this year that I just haven't quite used as much as these because let's say I bought it three months ago, but we have some products that I've loved for like two years. So what we're doing in today's video is I'm talking about my most used favorite products of 2021, but there also will be, in addition to this video, a best of cream eyeshadows of 2021, a best of lip products of 2021, as well as a best of foundations of 2021. I like doing these videos, so I said, why not? I really want to give you guys as many resources as possible. So again, this is my most used makeup, but there still are other holy grail items that I didn't quite use as much. So I'm going to have a best of beauty 2021 playlist linked down below for you guys so you can watch all of these videos once they're out. Let's just jump in. So first we're going to start off with primers. This is a primer that I have loved for a very long time, most used certainly, and it is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. A lot of you guys have tried this product and have really enjoyed it, which makes me very happy. There are a lot of primers on the market now, and I feel like this one really encompasses what I look for with a primer like this. It's a base product to really make your makeup apply beautifully. Also, my skin looks better every time I wear this. Like I could wear this on my own and I feel like it really refreshes my skin and gives it a smoother look. This is both hydrating and has moisture to it, but as a whole, it just creates the most beautiful buttery canvas for your makeup without it feeling like a slippy, uncomfortable silicone product. It really just kind of feels like a skincare item. I feel like my makeup always performs better when I'm using this. Otherwise, if I'm not, I feel like my fine lines peek through faster. My makeup kind of crackles in some areas. It's just a beautiful product that I've loved for quite a long time. Now, if I want to go with something that like imparts a glow to my skin because you know this is just more of a hydrating base it's not going to add a ton of glow 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 to my skin so if my skin is feeling particularly dry or dull that is when I will go in with my Glossier Future Dew. Now you don't need much of this product it really is instant glass skin to your skin. It makes it pretty perfect when I feel like my skin is just not doing well. I can see see how flat, how dull, how dry, how crackly my skin looks. If my skin is just not doing well, this really does an incredible job of faking it. It is, again, that one step quick, glassy skin that really also makes any foundation that I don't like, if it's like too dry, this will make it perform much better. So I always like to have this on hand because I do feel like it is a quick fix kind of item in my makeup routine. And it's also a long lasting glow on the skin as well. If you're worried about how this might interact with your sunscreen, you can use this under your sunscreen. You can also mix this into foundation. It's a super versatile product. Lastly, I have a new find from this year, which might be like my favorite affordable find, I think, which is the Physician's Formula, the Essence of Healthy Toner and Setting Spray. This product perfectly encapsulates, for me, the perfect integration of skincare and makeup. It doesn't feel forced. It really performs beautifully as both a skincare and a makeup item. But granted, I do prefer to use this mainly when I am doing my makeup. So what I like to do with this item is I will use it as a primer. This is 95% Galactomyces Filtrate Ferment, which is incredible for refining the skin I have found. It's really good at calming the skin. The skin just feels in general more clear and balanced when I am using fermented ingredients in my skincare routine. So I always feel really great about prepping my skin with this product. And what's beautiful about this mist is it is not one of those really, really dewy mists. It's just that plump, hydrated look. It doesn't look greasy. It just looks like a fresh skincare 
um, applied kind of look. I also put this on top of makeup and it works beautifully as that kind of MAC Fix Plus kind of step. It just melts all of the makeup down into your skin. I really, really notice when I don't have this on hand, if I don't pack it with me anywhere I go. It's a little bit difficult to find, but I do think that it's just one of the absolute best products that I found this year. Now let's move on into foundation. This was another find, I believe, yes, believe from this year, which is the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation from Shiseido. It's what I'm wearing on my skin today. By far, I think this, do I even want to say that? I really feel like this might be the best foundation that I've ever tried in my life. It is the most perfect medium coverage with a natural radiance that really feels like your skin is shining through and your skin looks healthy and natural. It has enough restraint to not be overly dewy, overly radiant. And I think part of what gives it that balance is that this does have a very soft touch of blur to it while also giving me beautiful, creamy radiance. The medium coverage in here looks so natural that sometimes I forget how much coverage I can actually get with this. It consistently looks good on my skin every single time. I honestly don't think that I've ever applied this once and didn't like the way that it looks. That is saying a lot. Consistency in makeup is so important to me. And really like with any product, some days you're, you know, you're not gonna have a good day. Makeup can go that way sometimes and that's totally fine. But if I seriously think about it, I don't think I've ever applied this once and didn't like the way that it looks. And what's beautiful about the Synchro Skin line is that as you continue to wear it, it really does have that innovative self-refreshing quality to it. It melts back down into the skin. It doesn't collect on top of the skin. It doesn't look makeup-y. It's absolutely incredible for dry skin, normal skin. I would say even combination skin if you are tending to lean more dry this time of year. But for all skin types across the board, the original Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation, I, again, was another most used item for me this year. This one will work better for a variety of skin types because it's more of a middle of the road finish. It's not quite as radiant as the Radiant Lifting, but it still has that expertly done formula that refreshes itself throughout the day. This is such an incredible long wear foundation. Like if anyone on the street approached me and was like, Amanda, I need a foundation. This would always be the one I would recommend because I feel like it really will work for so many different people. This one is a touch more blurring than the Radiant Lifting. It's a touch thicker, but these aren't really thick, heavy foundations either, which is another reason I really like them. Just that absolutely lovely medium coverage. If you want to talk about makeup that will really in person make you look beautiful and perfected, but not makeup-y, this is your best bet. I can use either 140 for a more neutral look or 130 if I want to go with like a touch more yellow. My neck is more yellow than my face, but these are by far my most used foundations. Other than one last one, again, I will talk about the other amazing foundations that I have used this year in my best of foundations for 2021, but these are the most used ones, and that is the Makeup Forever Reboot Foundation. This is perfect for every day for me, and the reason why I really feel like this is such an underrated product, I just want to scream out to the world that if you are looking for the most perfect sheer to light coverage makeup product that is fresh, slightly dewy, but, but just makes your skin look like filtered. This is that product. The reason why it is absolutely incredible is that it's a radiance that really looks like it's coming from within your skin. It is not a heavy, creamy, dewy product. Super, super thin and liquidy, really melts into the skin, but it just offers the most radiant, lit from within, almost filtered and refined look to the skin. It's really like your best skin day in a bottle. Like this really emulates the look of not wearing a lot of makeup, but also like your skin is just doing really, really incredible. More people need to talk about this foundation because it is, it, it, it's amazing. Next, let's talk about some concealers. Number one most used concealer by far is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. If you have not heard my spiel about this, 
totally fine because I'm willing to chat your ear off about it again. This is the most perfect under eye concealer for dry skin with dark circles and hollowness, which I happen to have all three. A lot of concealers can tend to exaggerate my dryness and even if they have good coverage, because of the dryness and because of the texture, I can almost exaggerate the hollowness that I have under my eyes. I think a lot of folks associate high coverage with actually having a bright look under the eyes. And I really don't believe that full, full, heavy matte coverage is really going to look as brightening as a product like this. It is absolutely perfect, especially if you enjoy a natural looking under eye. It also has caffeine, so I feel like it does depuff the area really beautifully. Always repurchase this. And if Kosas decides to discontinue this, uh, like my heart pounds even thinking about that. But the runner up, the more affordable option is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I, I just absolutely love this one as well. It's perfect for, again, that hydrated but smooth and covered look under the eyes. I never find that this exaggerates the hollowness. I will say that I feel like they changed the shades around within the last couple of years and that was a little bit frustrating for me. But other than that, I still think that this is like a pretty perfect formula. I think the reason why the Kosas has kind of taken over its spot is that I just feel like this is a little bit more coverage and a touch more softening on the skin. Okay, let's move on into eyeshadow. Again, I will have my best of eyeshadow for 2021, which will probably be equally as long as this video. Number one, Charlotte Tilbury Oyster Pearl. It's a holy grail. Use it as a base, use it on its own. It is one swipe elegance, one and done, perfection. You guys, you cannot mess this up. It is the most perfect, slightly warm taupe. Like it has such a gorgeous brown taupey shift, but it doesn't feel overwhelmingly cool toned. Color itself is beautiful, but the formula is so smooth on the eyes. It just looks like creamy elegance incredibly easy to blend, incredible to work with, not going to exaggerate any dryness on the eyes. It is really like the epitome of a model off duty uh, cream eyeshadow. Perfect for day, perfect for night. It's really, that's why it's my most used is you can really wear it anytime and it's going to consistently look elegant and pretty. Just the most perfect reflection Really just a, a perfect product for me. But let's talk about the eyeshadows that are on my eyes today. And typically these two shadows will, like I will pair them when I wear them. So the wet glitteriness on my eyes is a product that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard me blab about. And by the way, I do have another wet looking eyeshadow video coming soon. This is the OG. This is the formula and the eyeshadow that I have worn for years. And this year it was no different. This is Space Cowboy from the Moondust line from Urban Decay. Such a thin, squishy powder formula that is instant, wet, glossy looking lids without the gloss. I talked about this in my wet looking eyeshadow video, but this is perfect because the base is a beige kind of translucent color that immediately sinks down into the skin to really become almost invisible, at least on my skin tone. What you're left with is just this beautiful, soft, translucent color that really emulates the look of slightly, you know, dewy skin. And then the reflex and the glitters on here create that mirror-like shine. And I talked more about that in my original wet look video, but part of what makes for an incredible wet looking eyeshadow is both the translucence, it needs a little bit of translucence to it, or it needs more of a spectral kind of shine and reflection, which means it creates that mirror-like effect. That is what actually makes something look wet. Perfect glittery smoothness. There are plenty of glitters that are glittery and pretty and will reflect beautifully, but if they're not super smooth, then that is when the illusion isn't 
quite as wet looking. I could go on and on talking about all of my favorites, but I will save that for my upcoming video. And you can also check out the original video that I've already done on my favorite wet looking eyeshadows. And my last most used eyeshadow is Again, probably not a surprise because, you know, I use these products all the time. They are the Ulta Matte Cream Eyeshadows. If you're looking for the most easy to use matte cream eyeshadow, I still firmly believe that it is these. They're so affordable. The only thing that sucks is there aren't a lot of shades to choose from. They are the perfect base. Whenever I want my makeup to last longer, I will use these in my crease and then apply this right onto the lid. The makeup look will instantly last much longer thanks to these. I love that these are so smoothing on the eyes. It doesn't make the eyelids look crackly or dry, which I do feel like a lot of liquid products tend to do that this is more of a you know creamy liquid texture but it has that softening touch of smoothness that really is so flattering on me I feel like building a makeup routine is looking for those products that will work with anything like this shadow will make any look come to life these will make any look last longer look more blended and perfected so many of you guys have tried these and have loved them let's talk about blush so the number one blush that i used this year were the blushes from Kier weiss and i have a bunch of different shades so really like i i feel like once I tried these, it was really the only blush formula that I was using from there on out. The Kira Weiss blushes are absolutely gorgeous. If you are a fan of cream cheek products, I highly suggest that you guys check these out. I actually have them in this palette. You can purchase them without the packaging and they are cheaper. My two favorites are the shade Blossoming. This is a sample. I also have the full size as well as the shade, I guess it's three favorites because that's, I have three of them. That's the most perfect juicy color. Then Inner Glow is what I think helped me become so obsessed with these. Such an incredibly unique product. So it's more of a taupey pink with a touch of, you can kind of see in here, it has a touch of a shift to it. No visible glitter or anything like that. What it ends up doing is if you have more fair skin, and you want a blush that kind of sculpts your cheeks without using a contour, it'll add that touch of flushed pink. This is perfect for that. And it really gives you that like, what is different about their makeup kind of look. It adds that nuance to any look. It adds that sculpt. It's gorgeous. And by the way, the formula itself is very, very creamy, but incredibly blendable. It's not a greasy, product by any means. If anything, I feel like once it's on the skin, it kind of sets down and melts into the makeup. Incredibly easy to work with. They're not finicky. They're not tacky or heavy. And my other most used formula was probably the Lip to Cheek palette from Undone Beauty, specifically in the shade Rosewood, because this is like fruit punch, juicy cheeks, all in one. This one has more of a translucent base to it than the Kira Weiss one. So it's really able to give you such a gorgeous like pop of color. And it does set down to more of a kind of like blotted, again, like juicy cheek color look. Something else I really enjoy about this as well is that the formula is quite stiff. So it actually makes for a product that really wants to adhere well to the skin. With some cream products, they're really, really slippy and creamy. They have too much silicone in them, which I have noticed like a lot, especially this year. I feel like every brand came out with a cream blush and added way too much silicone. What ends up happening is it does not work well with other makeup products. It will move makeup products or you just have this differentiation between the blush texture and your foundation. This formula was done right. This is the kind of formula I think that works beautifully. It also lasts really well because it has this kind of staining quality to it. So another very, very beautiful blush and probably other than these, like once I started using these, it was like one of the only blushes that I wanted to use. But other than that, this was definitely a blush I reached for 
a ton. All right, now for bronzer. This year, I found so many new bronzers that I absolutely love, but I had three that I used the most. The first was the soft sculpting sticks from Makeup by Mario, whether it was the shade light or the shade light medium. Light medium is better, it's a little bit more neutral and I liked that one for kind of sculpting. Whereas if I wanted more of that warmth and something better, especially for like winter, then I'll go with the shade light, which this is the shade that I'm wearing today. Beautiful, rich, even pigmentation. The way that it looks on the skin, it's like, it wants to blend when you need it to blend, but it wants to last and stay where you put it as well. So the formula is really, really balanced and easy to work with in that way. The shades were so expertly done. I just feel like this one is really, really hard to beat as far as a stick bronzer product. The only thing I don't like is that, I don't know if you guys can see, it's a little bit wobbly because you have a brush on the other end, which I mean is great, but I have been noticing that. Second most used bronzer, again, another cream, which is the Say Sun Melt, and this is the shade Light Bronze. This is like, blows the Chanel, uh, Soleil Tanded Chanel out of the water. The shade range is better. The texture is better in my opinion, because this has like, a solid souffle texture. It's very whipped, but then it's kind of compressed down to give you a very natural, almost like cream to powder texture on the skin. It blends really well with a bunch of different makeup textures. It's just an easy going kind of product, which I mean with cream bronzers, I think that that's really important if you're a beginner to reach for a formula that really wants to work with you. A kind of whipped quality that it has without being an overly thick, creamy product on the skin is what makes this stand out to me. And lastly, a product that I don't have here, but was certainly my most used powder bronzer of this year, which is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Powder Bronzer. If you couldn't already tell, I love cream products and I reach for cream products way more often than powder, but I was absolutely blown away by that powder bronzer from Makeup by Mario. In general, Makeup by Mario was a brand that really, when I look back at this year, in like really, really freaking impressed me. That powder bronzer is so thin and finely milled that it looks like the look that you can get on the cheeks is so natural. I do feel like with some super pigmented, like creamy lush powder bronzers, when you apply them, they look thick and you can kind of just see them on the skin. If you have any pores or texture or hair on your cheeks, I just feel like, I can always see it. And I've tried so many different powder bronzers. A lot of them do not impress me, but holy crap, the Makeup by Mario is absolutely perfect. It looks so thin on the skin. During the summer, it was one that I was using like almost every time I put on my makeup. Let's talk about some brows because I think like my most truly used product for my brows was the Arch Brow Sculpting Pen from Hourglass, but it's because I'm trying to use up that product. Like I've had it for like three years and it just, it's still sitting there. But these are the two that if I have to pick, like this is what I'm going for. And these are also the brow products in my brows today. Number one, the Major Brow Lamination Gel from Patrick Ta. I really didn't think an eyebrow gel could really truly make me feel as giddy as this one does. The more I use it, the more I love it. So first thing that I find really unique about this product is the applicator. The top of it is more pointed with all of these very short, more densely packed bristles at the top so you can really finesse any little part of your brow and get more control at the end. But then you have these more loosely packed, longer bristles at the bottom. And in general, this applicator is quite a flat brush so you can really press up the brow hairs, really get that lift. And wow, it gives me the separation and it also gives me a fluffiness that I just wasn't expecting with a gel like this. This is, by the way, this is heavy duty. You do not need a lot and I don't think that you should expect to go back five minutes later and apply more and like expect your eyebrows to not already be like set for 
your entire day because this will set and not budge. But for my coarse eyebrow hairs, it gives me lift, it gives me control. And I find that out of like all of the lamination brow gel products, this one by far, I think is the one that is going to work for the most people. It doesn't look super thick in the eyebrows, which is another thing that like, I really have had trouble with, you know, with soap brows is that it's very easy with soap brows to add just a little bit too much and then there's a lot of build-up product and then the eyebrows kind of stick together and somehow for me they end up looking more sparse this is a very lightweight product again like you can go overboard with this and then you might get like little gel specks but it's never going to be a brow product that you get like wet flaky soapy kind of pomade bits in your eyebrows with. I feel like a few times you can use this and definitely get the hang of it and I am very happy and I just notice, like I notice that I like my brows extra whenever I have this on. And then the brow pencil, I rediscovered it in the last few months and then I, I just feel like every time I use this brow pencil, I like the brow look. It's Brow Wiz from Anastasia Beverly Hills. You know, it's one of those things like don't change what ain't broke or don't fix what ain't broke. I really, really love this product because it's just the perfect amount of pigment. It's a stiffer formula. So I just feel like you can get those really pretty brow hairs. If you haven't revisited the Brow Wiz in a while, I highly recommend it because it's just one of those products to stand by for a lot of people for a reason. All right, let's move on into mascara. The first mascara that I wanted to recommend is one that I'm wearing today. I love it. Really gives me the drama that I'm looking for with a lash look. Without it looking too clumpy or heavy, this is also a really great mascara for pushing up the lashes and getting that like false lash fanned out effect. Perfect for every smoky eye look. It is the Essence Lash Princess Mascara, the false lash effect. A standby for so many people, so affordable. It's just incredible. It is, again, the perfect rich black pushed up volume pretty length that still doesn't like it still looks fluffy it doesn't look like a heavy weighed down lash which is kind of like my pet peeve with mascaras i like for my lashes to look pretty i like for the kind of compliment like your lashes look so pretty and long rather than your mascara looks good that kind of thing another favorite from this year was the ulta beauty twisted volume and i love this one because it is such a versatile mascara you can get so many different looks with it so this is one of those mascaras with a dial on the end and when you twist the dial the brush twists with it the more twisted the brush the more volume that you get but you can also get a very soft kind of everyday natural look with this mascara as well beautiful separation when you're just like on the first setting but you can also get that more rich pretty fluffy volume but you can get so many different looks with it that I feel like it makes it even more of a steal. And because you're not supposed to keep mascaras longer than like two to three months, I feel like you can just open this one, get a variety of different looks. And if you don't feel like you can go through two mascaras at once, you don't need to because you can just open this one. Oh, and then CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume is, I think, the third most used. I definitely was reaching mostly for the Essence, then the Ulta, then this one, but this is still like a standby product that I've used for years. Like I remember using this product freshman year of high school. Like that's how long I've loved this one. Luffy, separated, gorgeous volume, perfect for every day. Definitely the best CoverGirl product that I have ever used. Oh, okay, let's talk about lip products. And again, I will have a best of beauty 2021 with just lip products because I realized when I was picking out products for this portion of the video that I have actually found a lot of holy grail items but I wanted to again just focus on like the most used items so first let's start with what is the lipstick on my lips which I mean this ended up kind of getting mixed with some other lip colors but they are the NARS lipsticks. The shade Dolce Vita is a product that I've used for years. It is the perfect sheer lipstick. It just gives you that touch of color, that touch of balminess, but it's still more of a stiff formula so you can get precision. It's not like just applying a chapstick. There is an elegance to it. It still has a touch of that sheer translucence again and I really just feel like this sheer shade is so perfect, such a perfect everyday kind of color. But I am wearing the shade Fabala on my lips and this is more of like a chocolatey kind of berry color. 
absolutely gorgeous. I feel like this is perfect to add just a little bit of edge to a look. I really feel like going with a slightly more cool toned brown like transforms any look into like it just gives it that edge that like 90s edge that i think is so pretty at least that's how i tend to feel but yeah these were my two most used lipsticks aside from this one which i feel like this is more of a hybrid formula this i love this i love this formula so much and i specifically love this shade this is charlotte tilbury's happy kiss balm in the shade pillow talk talk about one of the most insanely beautiful kind of hybrid formula. It is for me, it's like a liquid lip balm that was put back into a stick form. It's lush, it's balmy, but never sticky. And I also really like that, you know, it gives you enough pigment to feel like a lipstick, but the texture of it, the way it looks on the lips, how it really fills in the lines of the lips reminds me of that more liquid lip balm kind of formula. It is so, so perfect. It has a very, very soft, nice kind of vanilla scent. And the NARS lipsticks, I don't believe have a scent. No, it's just kind of like lipstick smell. And lastly, the Physicians Formula Diamond Plumpers are insanely beautiful. It is like supermodel, big, juicy, plump lips. I love the shade Princess Cut, which is like a clear iridescent. That makes your lips like Oh my gosh, like every time I wear it, I am really, really into the lip look. It gives you the perfect like water droplet effect, just enough plump, like it's not super abrasive with the stinging or anything. The applicator is this pointed flat applicator so you can get super precise. This is just juicy, gorgeous color. This shade is a new one that I picked up recently. It is Champagne Cushion Cut perfect to nude lip gloss. Certainly my most used gloss and the one that has impressed me the most. Now for a couple odds and ends, let's talk about some brushes. Any of the Rare Beauty brushes have my stamp of approval. The concealer brush I use almost every day. The foundation brush I use almost every day. The way they designed such a fluffy but dense brush to apply makeup the way fingers do Gives, gives for a perfect application every time. These are sturdy, gorgeously done brushes that aren't too expensive. Certainly worth the investment in my opinion. As far as concealer brushes go, I rarely use a brush for concealer. It can kind of leave streaks and I would prefer to just use a finger or a sponge, but this one gives me coverage, doesn't exaggerate any of the texture that I have on my skin. Great for nose contour, perfect. And again, the foundation brush is the best foundation brush I've used as well. And I use the foundation brush for blush, bronzer, so versatile. Seriously, I'm like considering picking up two more of these just to have them on hand. And my most used cream eyeshadow brush was the Pro 18 brush from Sephora. It is this fluffy little pencil brush that is so perfect for details with cream eyeshadow, but it also works perfectly to just blend something out into the crease. And I really feel like this brush uh, expertly applies cream eyeshadow every single time. I also have a video in the works for my favorite cream eyeshadow brushes. So there's a lot more to come. If you're excited about any of these videos and you're not subscribed yet, Make sure that you guys are subscribed because if you haven't noticed throughout this video, I have a lot of really exciting videos coming. Lip liner, should have mentioned this with the lip products, but they are the lip cheat liners from Charlotte Tilbury. I have a little bit of walk of shame on my lips today. Perfect berry shade and pillow talk is just my perfect nude. Really, I cannot be without this lip liner. For highlight, the Hollywood Beauty Light Wand is definitely my most used, which is why I'm not even mentioning my other cream highlights, but I'm just using this so often and I really can't quit this one. It really just gives me that dewy, fresh looking glow every time. It's enough of an amped up highlighted look as well, which I feel like a lot of highlights are too um, subtle, but again, there, I mean, there are plenty that are way too much for me personally, but this one, gives me enough of that juicy look for it to be worth to apply it because again you know with some of my favorite foundations that i have they give me enough radiance and enough dew and prettiness that it's almost redundant to apply some of these other cream highlights that have been coming out but this one is one that certainly stands the test of time okay you guys that was my best of beauty 2021 most used makeup. Best of cream eyeshadow as well as best of foundation and lips 
all coming soon. Check out my playlist link down below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support my channel, you can use any of the links that I have down below. I just appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for watching. I know this was, this was a long one, but I hope that you guys did enjoy it. And I will hopefully also see you all in my next one.